What's going on everyone? This is Squishy here. So today, I wasn't planning on it, but I'm going to teach you how to build a computer. It's going to be pretty cutthroat. I'm not going to show you screwing anything in. If you don't know how to use a screwdriver, you probably shouldn't be doing this. So, when you first get your uh, motherboard out of the box, you're going to have your motherboard and you're going to have your, your beauty ring. So I'm going to show you how to install this and how to do everything on your board. So when you first open it up and lay it out, you're going to have this right here. There's little brackets held by four little screws. Um, if you're going to use your stock cooler that comes with the processor, you're going to need to take the brackets off so that you only see the little screw holes. Now there is a bracket on the back of this, so if you don't have your motherboard holding down like straight, then the bracket's going to fall off and you're going to have some issues. But what I tell everyone to do first is go ahead and remove these brackets because you're going to put your processor on. If you're going to use the stock cooler, then you need to go ahead and put your thermal paste on and put the little stock cooler because it's really, really small. If you're using a uh, bigger one, like I have the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition, which is, oh, <laughs> which is right here. You're not going to want to put this one on first because it's super big and you're going to have to try to get this in the case. But that one does take a different bracket, which is right here. So this is going to go on the back side instead of the stock bracket that's on there. Um, if you need to know how to install this, you're going to just have to have to read the directions. So what I do first is I install the processor and then right here, hey Jazzy, sorry, right here, I also have an M.2 chip and I'm going to install this. So let me get down here. There we go. So if you see right here, this is where the M.2 goes. And this is like a little, I call it a little leveler screw. Sorry, light's not very good. But what you want to do is uh, you want to figure out how long your M.2 chip is, which usually lines up with the third a little hole right here. You're going to put the leveler on there before you put the M.2 chip on there. Okay, and that's going to keep this chip flush. That way it's not going down and like at an angle like this with my fingers. Um, but so let's go ahead and install that and I'll be right back. All right, so there's the M.2 chip, SSD. That is, uh, who makes that one? Scan disk, one terabyte. But you see how level it is now? That's what you want to do. That's why you need that little leveler. So next, let's go ahead and move forward and put the processor on. All right, so you see now I have the little mod for the uh, external cooler, the aftermarket cooler, I should say. And now we're going to go ahead and put the processor on. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you lift this lever up. And then you want to look on the board. See right there? Right here. See the triangle? Yep, right there. So that triangle is going to match with, you see on the process, let me zoom in, zoom in, no. Oh, this is horrible. The light's reflecting off, so it's uh, so on the side of the, processor there's like a little tiny triangle a little tiny mark it's so hard to do this without with one handed without someone recording for me well you get the gist of it there's a little mark you can kind of see it now there's a little mark on the top right of the processor right there you're gonna line that up with this and you're gonna make sure that you don't bend any of the pins on the bottom okay so this is super super fragile and you see you can see down every line so my pins are straight you do not want to bend these pins because that'll just be all bad. So what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and seat this. So you see it's down there and you're just going to push the lever down and now it's good to go. All right. So I actually had to, I didn't seat it right. So I had to pull it back up and reseat it. So there we go. I'm going to make sure I get this little shot in there just in case any of y'all seen the top rise up a little bit. Sorry about that. So now everything is ready to go. So we're ready to put this in the case. All right. So I'll be right back and we'll get the case up here. All right. So I have my computer here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the beauty ring and you're going to put it inside of here. Right. So the good rule of thumb is where you see the mouse and keyboard up top. Right there. You see that little image. That's going to go up top. So you're going to have to go inside. And you're going to have to press it in there until it snaps. All right. And as you can see, it went in there beautifully. Now, if you've bought your parts used or something like that and you don't have a beauty ring, then just skip past this. 
doesn't really matter it just makes your stuff look better it's not necessary though all right so now what we want to do is we want to put the motherboard inside your case so basically this little part right here has to fit into the beauty ring first so you're gonna come in at an angle and put that side into the beauty ring first and voila just like that everything's seated properly my dog wants to say hi hi say hi lily hi baby hi baby this is lily hey baby what you doing what you doing yeah she's hunting a mouse in my garage she thinks there's a mouse in here somewhere oh what you doing come here no anyway so now that you have that seated properly you're gonna see all the little holes right here they're gonna be able to take a screw now so the screw should have came with your case um, if you bought a motherboard think it's gonna come with your motherboard you're out of luck and apparently she wants me to play with Mario <laughs> what you doing give me Mario Arr. so yeah so what you want to do first is you want to come way over here you're gonna start with these ones you're gonna secure the motherboard down to the frame all the way around so that way it's tight so whenever you go and put anything like your RAM um, seat your fan or put your graphics card in whatnot or your capture card that way it won't have any stress on the board because it's all secured all right ladies and gentlemen so now we have the screws and all the main parts that we need there's one down there you just can't see it due to the lighting conditions in my garage all right, so now that everything's in there, now before you put the big cooler on, if you have the stock one, it's okay, but before you put an aftermarket liquid cooler, anything like that, you wanna make sure you hook up all the wires. So let's go ahead and pull this up. So with your case, there's gonna be stock wires with it. <clears throat> so what we have here is a USB 3.0. There's only one spot this stuff can go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this one can go. Um, and then the next one, is your HD audio and see there's pin counts my phone sucks at doing stuff if I don't tap it <laughs> that's right you say HD audio um, the next one is gonna be for your power switch it's gonna say F panel there you go now this one you see the pattern now this one is to control like your lights um, that comes around your right here your power button. It's control. It controls your power button if there's a reset button You'll see a reset switch now. This one is nice because it's all in one Normally on most cases they're gonna be just a bunch of little pins and you're gonna have to plug them in individually I like this NXT case because it's all in one. So let me get that routed through um, Also with your power um, I'm gonna go ahead and route all that through so basically when you're doing that so you're going to want a power cable right here. So if you look through all your stuff, it should be the biggest one on the power right there. See motherboard. Sorry about the focus. There we go, motherboard. So you're going to actually route that pretty close to this. So probably through this hole, through this hole, something like that. You have another power right here. My motherboard has two. So I'm going to then find the one that says CPU which is right here. And I'm going to route them through the top and make it come out right there. So let me do all that and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, also, when you're hooking up like these extra components from your, your case, they all connect down here on the bottom, um, except for my USB 3.0, which goes right here. But for the most part, it's all down here. So you're gonna need to route them through like the bottom of your case. That way cable management looks good. But yeah, let me get them all sticking through and I'll show you an update. All right, so now everything is wired up power wise. So you see my motherboard power right here. Um, these are extensions, by the way. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to go in there and buy them. It just makes cable management look better. You hook your uh, old ones into the new one and it makes it look better. Uh, so here's my USB 3.0. I just went ahead and snapped that one in. Up here in the corner, here's my other power to the motherboard. Now this one I don't have an extension for, um, so it's gonna have to stay black, unfortunately, but it's way on the top. One thing I did forget to mention, if your case has fans, so mine has a fan right here and a fan right here, 
go ahead and take those out. Um, I'm sorry about that. It's super late in the video. But hey, whatever. Um, and other thing I forgot to mention, make sure you, if you're using an external graphic card, make sure you go ahead and put that cable through too. So I have a nice white one extension for that one too. So on to the more important section, the case wires, okay? So some of you will even have a third one and it'll be USB. Let me get down here. So if you look real closely, uh, there you go, now you can see it. You see one that says USB, there's USB there and there's another USB. There you go, I have my flash on now so you can see a little bit better. Um, so you just wanna go ahead and, if you have one of these that say USB, go ahead and stick it in that. Super easy. So the first one is HD audio. All right, so you just wanna find one that says audio, um, which in my case, it says AAFP. So if you see, there's a pin missing right there. And if you look at this, super simple. There's a pin missing in the exact same spot once you flip it over. So you're just gonna go ahead and stick that right there. There you go. So now my audio one's on. But you see with my cable management, I mean, that looks pretty horrible. So what you need to actually do is reroute it underneath this and come back up. All right, so now we have that uh, audio cable. It's a lot better now, cable management-wise. So now we just have to go on to the most important part, the panel section, which just controls the power and everything like that. So on my motherboard, it's gonna be right here in the bottom left, or bottom right, I mean. Um, so basically what you do is you're just gonna have to line those pins up, right? And you're gonna have to line it up to right here, which mine goes on the very right side. Uh, there is a diagram down there, but let me show you another board, one of my other Ryzen boards. I can show you a lot better with this one because this one's set up a little differently. So on this one, the diagram's right here. So you see the JFP1. And so what you do is you just look down here on the bottom until you see, oh, there it is, JFP1. So now you just look at the diagram because some people won't have the big section like I have. You're going to have little multiple, little itty bitty tiny pins. Um, so what you do is you see right there, like the top left of that, it says plus power LED and then a minus sign. So what you do is you come down here on the very top left, you're going to put the positive of the power on the right side. You're going to put the negative. So then you're going to come back and you're going to be like the power switch left side's positive, right side's negative. So you're going to go right here. So now you're going to be right at the very top of that one, the top right, right next to that, where the hole is and the left side is going to be positive, right side is going to be negative. And you're going to come back over here. If you have a reset button, you're going to do the exact same thing. So that's the most important part of the build, basically, I think, because that's the most annoying one. Now, in my case, I don't have little tiny pins. Mine's all together. So I'm just going to, there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that in there, and I'll be right back. All right, so my stuff's in there. And as you can see, I actually read the diagram wrong. Mine is on the left, not the very right. So it just fits right in there. So now we're ready to add the fans back in. And once you add the fans back in, we'll be ready to do the cooler, then the RAM, and then the graphics card. So let me go ahead and put the fans back in. All right. So now you can see my case fans are in there. And we're ready to do the thermal compound or thermal paste, however you want to call it, on the processor. Everybody has their own different way of doing it. This is like the best way I've learned how to do it. I just put small dots right like that, and then I take a small little card and I actually scrape it. Sometimes you'll get the card with a thermal compound. Um, I just use an insurance card that I don't use anymore. You just wanna scrape it from one side to the other with a nice even flow all the way across. All right, and now you can see I have the thermal paste on, which this is the card I use. You see there's still a nice chunk left over, but that's all right. You just want a nice little thin chunk right there. Oh, and don't be scared to press down a little bit. You actually have to like level out the card and press a little bit and smear it. So at, hard, at first it's gonna be a little hard, but you'll get it. And I come from all different directions. I come from this way, this way, that way, the other way. You know, I walk all around my case like that. That way it's a nice even coat. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. You can look up more videos on how to spread thermal compound if you want to. So now, Let's go ahead and get that fan in there. All right, so now we got the heat sink on, right there. We've got the cooler about to go on, the big fan. It actually just grips on the sides of it, 
like that. But what I wanted to note first is that when you're screwing this on, see it's pretty sturdy, you want to start first, and these screws are spring-loaded, right? And so that's that way when you uh, tighten it down on the processor, it's going to keep nice steady pressure on it. But what you want to do is you're going to have to push kind of hard when you've got the screwdriver right here. You're going to want to start one end. Then after that's barely started, you're going to have to keep holding it. You're going to want to go and start the one caddy corner from it. Then you're going to do this one, and then you're going to do that one in no particular order. But what you want to do is you want to keep constant steady pressure. You don't want to just screw one end down first and then try to do the next one because it's not going to work right, and you're going to end up screwing your processor up. So once you get them all barely in there, you're just going to start with one and keep going around until they're all nice and tight. And then you're going to go ahead and if you have this one, you're going to go ahead and put your fan on, which it just claps on the side. I have to I have cords in the way, so I don't want to do that. So after we do that, we can put our, pro our RAM in and then we can go ahead and put our graphics card in. All right, and so there we have it. Other than my dirty fans right there that I need to wash off because <laughs> it had my liquid cooling unit right there that I'm not sure if it blew out when I got in my power surge and I lost everything. But yeah, so there's my Corsair RAM, my LE, or RGB, my RGB fan. All my fans are RGB. I have an RGB cool, or, uh, controller module in the back. And this is it. Oh, and I put my Elgato 4K60 Pro in. So there's my hard drive. My graphics card, my GTX 1060, my Elgato capture card, my processor, and my RAM. And I'm going to ha definitely have to take some stuff and clean that up before I start it up. But yeah, so that's it. That's, I mean, it's just that easy to uh, fix everything and get everything up and running. So now, what you'd normally do, so here's the back with all the wires exposed. So you would tighten all that up, you zip ties my... My case actually comes with ties so I can do all this with my cable management and got to plug in all my, my uh, RGB stuff. And then I'll put the side of the case on. You'll never ever see that mess. And all you'll see is this nice clean beauty right here. And here's my little helper that helped me. <laughs> all right, and here's everything put together. If y'all want to see what everything looks like. Still a little mess. I still have some more zip tying to do my VR headset but yeah this is what everything looks like when it's complete if you guys want to check out my system my little layout it's all pretty nice I'll show you the back of this I actually have an arm that goes up and attaches to this monitor right here and then I have my 35 inch scepter ultra wide screen. And it comes over here to my little 32 inch element, little Walmart special with my Elgato key light. <clears throat> uh, oh, 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 and my Yeti mic. And a boom. With my stream deck and my coarse hair setup. I just got this desk recently for Christmas, or no, this for my birthday, three days after Christmas, so might as well have been. I already have burns in it. <laughs> Oops. But yeah, so that's my setup. Hope you all like this video. Make sure you all like and subscribe.